Okay, now the other part about this is that there are a lot of things that are multi-step in WX Python. And you find yourself doing the same things over and over again. So um, what we wanted to do is, is you know, make that simpler and uh, frankly foolproof. So like for an example, when you want to just increase the size of any, any font in WX Python, it's a four-step process. You have to get a font object from your control, get the point size from that, reset the point size to something bigger on that font object, and then reset the font object to your object. So that's, uh, you know, it, it's not brain surgery, but it's, it's tedious to have to do that over and over again. Okay, and Dabo, oh, it went a little too quick. In Dabo, you just set the font size, and just increase it by one. It's just a property. Under the hood, it does all that stuff for you. Okay, so we're just wrapping that thing and just presenting you with a simpler interface, just something like font size. Okay, now one of the things that inspired this was something I heard a friend of mine say, a developer, that if you don't have to write something, you don't have to debug it. All right. Every time you sort a list in Python, do you worry that all those pointers are being managed and do all that C stuff that happens under the hood in, in the Python interpreter? No, you just call the sort method and it works. You know that the people that wrote that sort method debugged the hell out of it and it's pretty solid now. So we've done this and we've had lots of people banging on this so that when you set these properties, they work. And so you don't have to worry about, you know, if you use that a hundred times, I'll guarantee you, at least once out of that, you're going to have a typo or something stupid like that that's going to screw you up. So, all right, so I wanted to just show a couple of examples. Uh, one is dealing with images. If you have to display an image in there, that's a very complex process. Uh, has anyone worked with the WX bitmap and WX image and... Okay, you know that there's a lot of stuff that goes on, copying to and from an image control, loading from a file, uh, resizing, you have to call scale methods and reconvert it to bitmaps. It's a pain in the neck. For a grid, you have to send messages from the, ta the underlying table object back to the grid saying that I'm adding a row, I'm deleting a row, I'm adding a column, I'm deleting a column. It, it's a lot of stuff that goes on under the hood in order to work with grids in WX Python. The results are great. When you, when you get that stuff down, grids are very powerful, but it's a lot of work to get it to go. So I'm going to be showing a couple of examples of, um, of this. I'm not going to sh I started out trying to put together the WX Python code and frankly I've forgotten a lot of it because I, I did this stuff, I spent like two months working on the images and the grids total, I think, when we first wrapped those things. And I haven't looked at that code since, except to, you know, clean up a little bug here and there. But uh, it just took me too long to write it in WX Python. I'd forgotten it all because it's just simpler to do in Dabo. Okay. So that's, um, that was a lot of our motivation for this uh, deep, uh, UI API. And The other part that we've spent a lot of time working on is the whole notion of visual tools. Okay? Like it or not, um, there's an awful lot of project development going on in the last decade, let's say, in Visual Basic. Okay? To most people coming in, they want to develop a desktop application. Their first choice is Visual Basic. And so, you know, rightly so, there, it's been the object of a lot of derision. You say, I'm a VB coder and people laugh at you, you know, stuff like that. And it's true because you get the lo lowest common denominator are the ones going into VB. And there are an awful lot of bad VB programs out there. There are also a lot of good ones, but you don't hear about those as much. They're not as funny. Um, so you get a lot of these people, and now if, if you follow Microsoft at all, all these VB programmers have basically been cut loose. The VB.net <laughs> isn't Visual Basics. Them, they're learning a whole new tool. Some of them will keep drinking the Kool-Aid and keep going along with whatever Microsoft feeds them. Others are looking to other tools. Uh, Real Basic is another competitor that I think, you know, does it a lot better than VB ever did. It's a really good tool. But I've seen, since I follow a lot of the, the Python lists, a lot of people coming and saying, how do I do a GUI in Python? And you get, you know, you get a lot of people that, you know, are looking for, you know what they're asking for. They're asking for, how do I do VB, but in Python. 
All right, and you get some people saying, oh, you can use QT or WX or this or that. And it's not really very helpful because to them, they have too many choices and they, they don't know how to put it all together. But invariably, you get the one guy that comes in and you know, has the real macho attitude that, oh, I write all my UIs in code, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's great. I mean, I wrote, I, I write a lot of code, Dabo's all code and all that, but I can understand that when I'm doing a user interface, I don't want to spend a lot of time writing code, the same code over and over again to do the same things over and over again, display it, oh, that's not quite what I wanted, you know, change the... I, I want to be working on the problem at hand, whatever that application is designed to do. So I, f I want to be as efficient as possible. So if I can do the UI and get that out looking exactly the way I want it and do that quick, then I can focus my time on writing the code. Okay, so at that end, we've developed a few tools. Probably the uh, most involved one is the class designer. Uh, enables you to create reusable visual classes, and I'll be showing uh, that in some depth. Uh, we have a report designer. Um, since we come from a more database-centric uh, background, uh, you can use the report designer to, uh, with Report Lab to just print out anything that you need, and very flexible, very powerful. Uh, probably the least mature of these tools that we have now is the menu designer. It's just something I kind of slapped together in the last couple of months and it's uh, got, got a few rough edges, but it works. And the oldest tool that we have is the application wizard. Uh, we, I gave a talk two years ago. It was like a, the first public presentation of Dabo. And we had an app wizard then that could enable you to create a, a CRUD application and enable you to search and update, delete a, a remote database uh, and do it in about 30 seconds. So I'll be showing these tools uh, just real briefly. My uh, email address is my name. It's just ed at leaf.com. And our website is dabodev.com. We have a couple of uh, mailing lists. And uh, rather than write out those long mailman type URLs, just go to dabodev.com and the links are there for that. All right.